And hello, everybody. Welcome to a Sunday night edition of Ask Us Anything. We are Mike and Jennifer. And uh, can we tell them we're tired? <laughs> we and have been driving like crazy. You have been driving like crazy 10 hours yesterday. Yeah. And uh, we're back in Michigan. And then two and a half hours today because we went to another part of the state. And we're home for about 10 days. And then now we're next next trip is off to Hershey, Pennsylvania. We've spent the last most of the last three weeks on our property in Tennessee, where we can we won't give all the details, but we're now going to have a phase three, a phase two. We've already done phase one, finished that. And uh, pretty soon we're going to do phase two. We've got some new projects that we want to do with that land. I got a feeling we're going to always have new projects. Always don't you be think? something. Yeah. So, hey, we have a new winner to announce uh, from the Waggle Pet Cam. And yeah. the winner? Uh, Adrian from Las Vegas, Nevada. Congratulations. And he won the Waggle Pet Monitor 4G GPS. And look how many uh, entries we had. Wow. 14,329. Yep. So, you know, we do these things a couple of times a month. Next week, we will be announcing, well, actually, we're not going to have one next week because it's Labor Day weekend. So we're giving Phyllis and Chris Cowley, Chris Cowley over on YouTube, Phyllis is handling Facebook and all our other platforms. Uh, we're giving them the week off, weekend off, and we are going to take it off as well. A lot of you will be camping the last hurrah of summer. And uh, so we're not going to be on next week, but in two weeks when we come back, we'll have another giveaway. And we've got some great ones lined up for the rest of the year, too. So lots of fun. Um, what else do we have to say? Not much, except... Uh, uh, it's hot. Yeah, it has just been hot everywhere we have gone mm -hmm. in the past week. I so. expected it to be hot in Tennessee, and I expected it to be hot in Florida. And now yep. it's hot in Michigan. All right. So uh, here's the deal. We're going to do <laughs> questions. We, we're adding a couple new platforms. We are now simulcasting on Twitter. And LinkedIn, as well as our Facebook group, our Facebook page, uh, and our YouTube channel, and our Facebook supporters group. So all of those channels are getting us live, and we look forward to, uh, to staying in touch with you and watching uh, many of you uh, ask the questions, because this is... Ask us anything. Ask us anything. So... A uh, comment from our friend Ed Richards in Louisiana. So it's soggy in South Louisiana. And yeah. It's, it's the monsoon season, right? Right. Yeah, those, that, that weather is always uh, this time of year. Lots of it. Linda Ward checks in from Robbinsville, New Jersey. What is the app or program that shows pictures of campsites? Well, you know, there are almost all the state parks, or at least a good percentage of them, when you go to reserve a site on a state park, you'll find um, a, a picture of each of the sites. But the site that we have been talking about the most, which is particularly active in the West and the Northwest, is campgroundviews.com, all one word, campgroundviews.com. Check that out and you can actually reserve right from that site and you can see the site. You can actually do a 360 tour of many campgrounds and really see what the view would be from that site, what the site looks like. It's a, it's a great service. And uh, Mark Kep, who has developed that site, has just done a terrific job. And uh, we recommend that highly. Campgroundviews.com, Linda. That's the one to go to. Jerry Cornelius. Can't wait to see that new LTV. We can't wait to see it either, Jerry. Yes, uh, we pick it up. Uh, it'll be three weeks from tonight, we pick it up and then we're actually going to drive it home from the Hershey show. We're actually going to drive it from Hershey to the dealer. We're going to buy it, but they agreed to let us do be, do the transportation. So we're going to transport it from the show. If you're going through that Unity FX at the Hershey RV show, be very clean and neat because that's going to be ours. Yeah. And we don't want to be cleaning up after you. So be clean. Uh, so we are going to drive that, and uh, three weeks into tonight, we'll be in it. I really am curious to see it, because I want to see what changes they've made, and colors, and just Well, things, we ordered it things. so long ago, almost two years ago, and we were just talking the other night. We don't remember some of the little things that we ordered. I've got to pull out the order form and yeah. look at them, but uh, I think yeah. we do need to do that. Um, but we're really excited about that. So I'm going like, what did we order? Our, um, our fifth wheel, our Arcadia fifth wheel, is on our property. 
behind the locked fence or in the gates uh, in Tennessee. And we left that yesterday morning. And it was really sad because we've had such a good time down it, there in Tennessee. It was hard to leave it. And I, I, it's really sad driving around without an RV. Yeah, yeah, we we missed an RV being able to stop at a rest area, take a nap, you know, turn on the it's AC, lunch, chill easily. out. And because uh, we just drove back in the truck uh, on this trip. And uh, so, but three weeks from now, we'll have our motor home. And of course, our Arcadia is down in uh, Tennessee right now. And we'll probably keep it there for, for a, a couple of months anyway. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So, Linda Barkum. How's the weather this time of year uh, at your Tennessee property? Very hot. What was it today? 91. We looked, it was 91, but it cools off really nice into the 60s at night. Humid too. But it's been humid. It, it, actually, I think it's been fairly dry this last week. The first week was was real humid, but um, but it gets very hot. You know, it's Tennessee. It's very hot here in Michigan. It was 87 here today. We were doing some video work, and it was 91. And then it just took us a couple of minutes, and it was 99. Yeah, yeah. It was very, very hot. Uh, but um, And then it, it's actually was like Florida was – our property in Florida was – what was that, 88 today, and it was 91 in Tennessee, and it was 87 here in Michigan. So it's kind of the same everywhere we have been. So, But it's hot, hot. Cheryl Nelson. What is your best advice to getting your rig level when on fairly undeveloped ground? Well, we all struggle with that, let me tell you, Cheryl. <laughs> uh, I guess the thing that I would uh, suggest is carry along a couple of uh, one-by-six boards long enough you know, that you can drive onto it and back up an inch or two each way, uh, as well as if you're going to use those level blocks or those uh, those little things you can drive up on, those those almost like a wheel chuck and a, and a Lego block combined. Um, and then if you have, uh, if you have an automatic four-point auto, automatic leveling system, which many RVs do, that will help. But I think you'll find that having a couple of one-by-six boards for the tires of the either the motorhome or the trailer, whatever it is you have, that will help you get level a little faster than going back and forth and, and with those Lego bo blocks. Those Lego blocks work great on smaller motorhomes. I find them a little bit more challenging with the fifth wheel and, uh, and even our class C's that we've had, our class C motor coaches. So, uh, but a couple of one by six boards, you know, Five feet long, maybe, and then way you can you can move up and down. How about developed ground? I mean, well, it's the same thing. Yeah, you know, some people say, you know, they we've learned in developing our property. There's when people say they level it. There's two different ways. There's level, which almost always site. has a to the site, which almost always has a slight slope for so it can drain for so it can drain. Yeah, for erosion. And then there's laser level, which is dead on flat. And that's really what you want is laser level. Laser level that isn't made Sloped. to drain. But if it's if it is crushed rock, as many in many sites are, or if it's grass, a laser level site is going to change over time and rapidly change. I mean, you know, from week to week, month to month, it's not going to be quite as laser flat as you'd like. The only way to really have laser flat pretty much all the time as if it's uh, a concrete um, a concrete uh, pad that you're on. And we've toyed around with doing that in Linden in, in Tennessee, but I think we'll spend the money elsewhere on something else that we're, we're looking at. We'll share the plans with you after it is confirmed and we know what it's going to be like, but we're excited about what we're going to do next with that. So I hope that helps, Cheryl. Inka Schulz. Question, when you use your crock pot, do you keep it unplugged or do you keep it plugged in while driving? Yes, I yeah. do keep it plugged in while driving. And, and, but you put it in the I sink. I put it in the sink. You put it in the sink. Wrap a towel around it so it doesn't bounce around in there. And so it's it's and it's plugged in to power and it's in the sink. And it's great because you can be driving and your meal is being prepared. And when you're, you you have that great smell as you're going down the road if it's an R, if it's a motorhome and it's a great surprise if it's a trailer when you stop and you open the door. Yeah, it smells all, good in let's here. Let's hope always it's a good surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends what kind of a food it is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good question, Inka. 
Stephen Barris. Do you need to drain your fresh water tank monthly? Um, I drain it after every use. And for example, uh, if we had, if we, if we were out camping and we came back this weekend, as many of you I know have, uh, and I had fresh water there, I'd drain it. I would drain it right down and then I would put some new water in it just before we took off, just enough to have in use as you are transporting, you know, as you're going from place to place. I am not a big believer in the summertime of leaving water in your freshwater tank. You know, it gets very hot in there and that water can taste skunky. It's probably okay to drink and stuff, but um, that's our suggestion is to drain it, drain it. Red Hutchinson. Just checking in on LinkedIn. Hey, we just added that. Good. I and mean, he's a ham radio operator. Yeah, November 1, Sierra Whiskey Hotel. Uh, good to see you. Uh, yes. This is the first time we've, went, we've gone live on LinkedIn. I just noticed they've had it. I know they've had it for a while. And so we added that to all of our little platforms that we're, we're going. And it was, it's kind of fun to see it. So I'm glad you're catching us over there on LinkedIn. Bob Leach. Will the road to your land in Linden eventually be turned over to the county road department? Well, our road is on a county road. That's why we bought. Why we bought now, it. Remember, we bought in phase one of this. This is a 5,000 acre development that that land company is developing for RV and whatever you want to do with the land. And we bought in phase one. And that's where we could buy on this on, on a certain road, a county road. It's maintained by the county. The water ran right in front of us. The electricity runs right in front of us. The cable internet, which I signed up for this week, high-speed fiber internet. Amazing. I can't wait for that. Uh, that'll run right down, and the county maintains it. There are roads that they have dug out throughout that development. Those are not county roads, and there will be an, as those people who buy it in there will have to, as we understand, you got to talk to the land company, but as we understand, as other owners have told us, they have to pay a fee X amount a year. yearly. So, uh, but those are not county mm -hmm. roads. Bob Leach found your spot in Linden. Very nice. Everything is sold. Yeah, well. I've been telling you about it for a year, Bob. So <laughs> what can I say? Uh, actually, it's not everything because they have, uh, we just went through there and they're developed, they're up opening phase two and three, or I don't even know if they're calling them phases, but they're selling a whole bunch of property next Saturday. Now, the way that company does it is perceived by some as being rather high pressure because they do it in a one day sale. But when you think about it, you know, they're in the middle of this development. There's nobody around. You don't have a sales office there. So they don't have people trickling in. They have a one day sale where everybody who's interested comes and they make appointments. They find out what you are interested, how much property they make. They show you what's available. You drive out, but everybody's looking. And so people feel pressured. Uh, it's that fear of missing out because you're going to lot 23, which is I'm using that hypothetically. And they say, oh, you know, sold. It's only three souls. So just as you got there, somebody mm -hmm. sold it. Or you want to go look at three or four more sites and come back. And then you find the site is sold because they bring in all these people. So uh, that's just the way they do it. And, uh, you know, if that bothers you, don't buy from them because, you know, that's the way they do it. But they do have a big sale coming up Saturday. This coming on September 3rd. I know that. And they sell very quickly. Um, if you've, you know, we've met a lot of people in the last three weeks who are in developing their land and uh, people are really excited. We've seen license plates. People have come from all over the country. Um, uh, I'm just glad we got in early because we bought back in November. November. And now we found another developer that we're using and very happy with him. And, it, you know, there's, it, it takes a while to get, you got to get wells dug you, in many places. You've got to get your electricity trenched. You got to remove trees. So um, there is a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of people who want that property. So it's demand, you know, supply and demand, Bob, but they, they do have a lot of land. Linda. My husband and I will be visiting the Finger Lakes in a couple of weeks. 
we are getting some hints of things to do from your Adiranda guide. Well, great. You will love it. Make sure you um, just give yourself enough time. All those lakes, those finger lakes in upstate New York are so Beautiful much area. fun. And you're going right about the time that, that the grapes are being harvested. And, uh, you know, it's a it's just such a beautiful area. Our favorite time of year, really, uh, in the Midwest is is, um, is really September, October. So you're going at a great time, Linda. Enjoy yourself. And I'm glad you have our guide. Uh, for all of you, we have a series of like 10, 12 guides. I don't even, I have to count them. I don't remember <laughs> how many there are, but I think there's 12 maybe. Um of different regions of the country. And these are meant just for RVers. Anybody can use them, obviously, but they will give you an idea of where to go, a route to take, what to see, where to stay, um, sometimes where to eat. And uh, we've got them for all over. And we urge you to check out our, our RV Lifestyle Travel Guide books. So they're fun. Whew. Um, Davis Tandy and Buster. Bought a Waggle GPS and a year contract for Buster. Great. Uh, Buster will like it and it'll give you guys peace of mind knowing mm -hmm. what the temperature is in that uh, in that wonder that you guys have when you're uh, when you're leaving uh, leaving Buster to go for a little hike or a walk or something. And you'll know that he's comfy and cozy in the AC or the heat or whatever it is that you're uh, you're worried about uh, him suffering some some temperature extremes <laughs> that'll give you peace of mind go small and live large scott here how important is a water filter at the source and the tap i, I i'm kind of a water snob um most of the time we drink bottled water um we drink filtered water uh we filter our water at the source when we're camping and we also filter it at the tap uh, it just um, it makes it all always just good. Just a habit. It's just a habit, and uh, uh, we have, like, I say, we have, in Linden we have city water, and I I like being able to drink out of the tap. I mean, I hate to have to drink, you know, through a. We have a filter too that you can put in the fridge, and it'll filter it even more. But um, I don't think you can filter your water enough. So um, do it both ways if you can. Chris Mundo Biando. Hello, RV Lifestyle family. I hope all is well. It is. We're just, I'm looking at ourselves in our monitor and you look nice as always. I am really, I look tired. <laughs> I am tired. We let, it was a, see, so we tell them what we did last night. We drove 10 hours from our property in Tennessee to, um, we were going to go spend the night at our son's house in Western Michigan over this part over by Kalamazoo and just, as we were getting there towards the end of the day, we were maybe at 45 minutes out. He says, you know where we are? We're at a speedway, a little racetrack, stock car racing. And uh, they were at, they'd never been to one. And they said, well, you know what? Uh, it's on our bucket list. Let's go. So they took their kids and we met them and it was kind of fun. And they went because their neighbor. Yeah, their neighbor. And the neighbor's races. son races and so they'd been meaning to do that all summer and uh we've never we've never been to it either so yeah. after driving 10 hours i swear i did that when i did that loop around indianapolis yesterday the traffic was horrible all right so you did that i went out and watched for half an hour and then i sat in the truck with Bo. yeah because uh the noise was too much yeah, for it was too dog. much for him so i got an extra hour of sitting in the truck so if we're a little punchy it's because because we are. Because we are. Because <laughs> we are. Uh, Johnny Lightning. E evening all. A little late, but I have a good excuse. I was working on my RV. You never stop working on your RV, right, Johnny? That's mm -hmm. the way it is. Uh, always something to do with it. Uh, we we did, you know, we had a great time camping, but we were shooting video every day pretty much, weren't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Grisky. All right. Comment. Used your three great leg books. Uh Boondockers Welcome yep. and Camp Nab. Uh, to get some uh, primo spots in Northwest Michigan. Yep. Uh, we plan to do some north, uh, some Northern Michigan camping, maybe even sneak in another. We go all the time to the UP uh, after Hershey. 
And before like we to. have our big gathering down in, in Tennessee with uh, our gathering at the Buffalo River in mid-October, we hope to go up to the UP mm -hmm. with, with our new motorhome. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing that. That's in our plans. In the plans. You never know what will happen. Grizzly, uh, William Shi, Shy, Shi. All right. Hi. We're at uh, Harrisville, headed home to uh, Cleveland. Can you recommend a state park about four hours south of where we are to spend tomorrow night? Um, yeah. What's the one on Lake, on Lake Erie uh, near Monroe? Uh, can't think of the name of it. Um, just, just, just get go to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources website. Look at state parks, and there's one on Lake Erie, about four hours from where you are now, and it's uh, right north of Monroe, Michigan, and it's on the lake. You should not have a problem getting in. It's a beautiful state park, really nice, and then you're only an hour and a half or so from home in Cleveland. So give that a try. I can't think of the name of it, um, but it's it's there. Honest. <laughs> the Department of Natural Resources will have it. Anna Berry. Do you uh, plan to spend any winter time at your Tennessee property? I'd like to. Yeah, uh, I think so, too. We've been so hot the last three weeks that we'll kind of look forward to thinking about being out there with sweatshirts and jackets on and having big campfires. It was just too hot to have a campfire. We it did was. one. We did one campfire. And um, since our neighbor, who are lots up against each other. Oh, Brad behind yes, us? Yes, yep. gave us pictures of a little creek. Oh, gosh, yeah. That uh, divides our lands. I want to walk down there and see that. I wonder if I can And I'm wondering it. if we can't um, thin out just a few trees to make it easy. There's our campfire. Uh, let's see if I can make that work. A little blurry. Yeah, it's a little blurry. I'll have to back off. That's the campfire. And we did have a couple of pictures of that creek. There's there a nice is. little creek. I don't know if that works. Can you see that? It looks kind of weird in that thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, a creek. it's a nice little creek. Uh, you know, because our land's on a ridge, and there's a hollow in the back. A holler, excuse me. And on both sides, there's a holler. And it's a pretty steep drop down. And at anyway, uh, ours is on this ridge, and Brad's, our neighbor behind us, to the west of us, I guess he would be. Uh, he's on a ridge. And then both of us have a holler that goes down. And at the bottom of that holler, between the two of us, is this little creek, beautiful little creek. And his wife, Mary, said that uh, there is a hole in there that it could be a swimming hole. It's deep enough, yeah. Mm -hmm. You go sit and cool off. So yeah. So we still have a lot of it. We're thinking we want to build a trail down that way, maybe an ATV. I'd like to have it. There it is. That's right. Sterling State Park. Thank I knew you. it. Thank you, Johnny. That's the one that we recommend to our friends from Cleveland there. Um it's a great little uh, little spot, and I think we'll uh, we'll enjoy. We're having that creek. a lot of fun. We are, but Just a little ATV there, trail. Looking I think at this property and Bo, think, I think he's having fun. Although as an elk on, he was asking to go in yesterday. He'd had it with the heat. Yeah, he, he was, didn't he, want to stay outside with us. Enough's enough. Yeah, he, we he don't did. know enough to go in out of the heat. <laughs> it was hot. It was hot, and boy, having that. 50 amp service and the two air conditioners on. It was, it was awesome. They mm -hmm. ran for about three weeks. So James Massey. Uh, thank you for your recent talk of a uh, rear ca uh, camera cams upgraded ours this weekend. Works great. See y'all at Buffalo river. Yep. We are really looking forward to that. James, uh, we'll be sending out some emails to all those folks who have signed up and Boy, there's a bunch. We sold out all of the RV spots. There's a number of people that have rented a hotel room in Linden. Other people have their own property that they're camping on and uh, they want to be joining parts of it. So I'm not even sure how many people we have, but um, hopefully somebody will tell us pretty soon. Yeah, so we'll figure it all out, but we really are looking forward to that. So that's uh, it's going to be great. RC Walls 2010. We know we've never been to Cape Breton. Never been what, there. What state is that? I don't know. Why do you have to ask me these questions? I don't know. I don't <laughs> I know. I just never heard of it before. Sounds like it's out east. It does. Yeah, I don't know. Have not been there. Have not been there. So what can I say? You need that little computer to work it quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, what we used to do at yeah. radio. Bob Leach, where are you buying property next? He would love to buy some in Michigan. I would. But there's a lot of reasons Michigan 
poses a bunch of challenges that you don't find in, in the South. So um, I don't know, maybe Michigan. We'll see. We're looking, but uh, we've been looking for a long time and for, we find stuff, but it, it, it's sold almost immediately. And it all poses different problems from taxes to development costs and uh, things like that. So I don't know. Um, you, you know, maybe we won't, but maybe we will. Hey, keep the dream alive. <laughs> yeah, I do have a dream to do it. Yeah. But I got to say, it's Nova Scotia. It's oh, in the Maritimes. Okay. That's what I was wondering when, when he said it. I wasn't sure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, you know, the, I, the dream is alive, but I think the thing that surprised both of us is how much we have enjoyed Tennessee. Because even though it was really hot, one of the things, the biggest surprise is we did not have a problem with bugs. Now, if I go out in my backyard in Michigan, I am overwhelmed right now with mosquitoes. And we did not have mosquitoes. We saw a few flies, but nothing that was a problem. And I think it's because we're up high enough. You know, these ridges, they call it a mountaintop, the developer, but it's really ridges. And it's like 600 feet above sea level. But the hollers, I'm sure the bugs are down in the hollers, but mm -hmm. we were outside day and night and did not have bug problems at all. So we, but we, I, I, had, of, I had a nasty black fly one day when I was trying to get out of the sun and I went up the road up high. Up high. That thing was biting me. Yeah. Man, I went back to the heat. It's just because you're sweet. All right. Um, but I think we were both surprised. Yes. We not? How much we enjoyed I'm it. I'm sure there are times when you can't even walk outdoors because. It's like that in Michigan, so I'm sure it's there as well. Yeah, yeah. So, Chafan, okay. Ever been to somewhere in Europe? If so, what do you think? We love Europe, but... Um, we have not camped there. Yeah, we have not camped. We've, we've had been opportunity. all over Europe. We've been all over Africa. We've all, I've, been, I've been all over South America and Central America and we've been to Asia back in their journalism days, but... Um, We've not done camping in Europe. And and I, you know, if I was going to go camping in another country, uh, Canada is number one on my choice. We do like camping in Canada. Um, and I would love to do a, a camping trip to Australia, New Zealand. And Europe would be third on that list if we were going to out of town. Um, so, but that's just I mean, my problem. I like big empty spaces. I like big empty spaces. I like uh, mountains. I like, uh, I, you know, that's really what I like. And it's, you know, I'm sorry, it's pretty hard to beat the Rockies. <laughs> so it's pretty good. And there's a kind of a related question from Deborah. Okay. If you could only ever return to one spot to camp on the road, your property doesn't count. Where would it be? I know where. Where? <laughs> Many glaciers, campground, Glacier National Park. My favorite place in the whole world is Glacier. I just love the, I just love Glacier National Park. Uh, I don't like the crowds. And I don't like their, all the policies now at the park. You got to have timed entries and reservations. All that is just sad. But um, there's, there's very little I've seen that matches the grand tour of Glacier. How about you? Where would you go? Your most favorite place. Well, I can never pinpoint to one thing. You have to. That's the question. Make a decision. You have to. I just have. I think it's because one of the first places I went was Yellowstone, and it was something that I always, always wanted to do. And I mean, I'd like to take our kids there. Our like our grandkids are age five to twenty-seven. Eight of them, and people busy in college and everything else. And we can uh, complain about that crowd. That'd be a big crowd, of kids. <laughs> I, I'll go with Yellowstone too. I mean, I love Yellowstone, but. Um, both those parks are just outstanding. You had to talk me into where the animals are because I was so caught up in wanting. At oh, the Lamar Yellowstone. Valley. In yeah, the Lamar yeah, Valley. I love that. Because I was all caught up that I wanted to go to the other section where. All the, the hot springs. Uh, yeah, and the, all that and was. The thermal. But the Lamar Valley, when you camp there and you just sit, and mm -hmm. rest and take it in and you have yeah. a bison walk through your camp. It's great. But, you know, it's, it's lost its draw a little bit because of the crowds and the policies and all that stuff. But in terms of my favorite places, absolutely. It's, 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 for me, it's, 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 if I was, if I, my favorite place in, in Yellowstone is actually just on the Northern side of Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. 
uh, or up even the, the northeastern side, like uh, Silver City, up in that area, all those national forest campgrounds. Where we had mosquitoes just about carry us away. Oh, um, yeah, we did. But it was still, we, <laughs> was camped on that, we camped on that river, that glacial, anyway. Love all that spot. Yeah, but I love we the forgot West. to roll up one of our windows. And we're That's swatting right. mosquitoes like crazy. And we're a little thick between the ears. But we finally figured it out. So there's hope. Yeah, there is hope. Yeah, we did. We left one of our windows open. Sandra Finley. I spent uh, three weeks touring Cape Breton Island this past June. Awesome beauty. Folk art studios all over the island. The Cabot Trail Drive is an adventure. Uh, Gaelic music. Yeah, Gaelic like music. That. You know, uh, we've talked about that, and Jennifer and I were talking this weekend. I said, well, where would we really, where are our two more dream trips that we want to do in the RV? And there are two. The Maritimes is one. And Alaska is the other. The problem, we've been to Alaska twice, but not in an RV. Mm -hmm. The problem with Alaska and the problem with the Maritimes is they are so physically far away that it takes so long to drive there. And then you want to spend at least a month, you know, to really enjoy it. A month, uh, Sandra spent three weeks. I, I would even suggest five weeks in, in both Alaska or in the Maritimes. So for us, that problem means that we have uh, about a three month time period that we have to block off. Uh, I could easily be talked into Alaska next year and then Maritimes the year after. But we'll just have to retire so we can do that. Yeah. Uh, and when we <laughs> retire, we have to retire from doing this kind of stuff because we have, you know, we have three videos we do every week. We have new content on the blog every single day, a new article. We have our books, we have uh, our merch, we have our, our giveaways, we have all these things that require us. And he's to, not complaining. It's I'm not just, complaining. I'm just saying that to, to do these long time. trips, I would literally have to retire from doing a lot of this. Right. And um, I'm about ready to do that <laughs> because I do, I really would like to do the, uh, a three month trip to Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we'll see. So who knows? We, we have so many places that we want to go yet and do. Johnny Lightning, what is that in that collage between you guys in the back wall? Oh, this oh. thing? Those are all my press, press passes, passes that I have collected in a 40-year period. Some from the Secret Service, some at the major political conventions. There's one for covering the Queen. There's one for covering the Pope. Um, there's every major event, there's martial law passes that would allow me to go through police passes and every possible event. Those, that's what those are. Those are all the different press passes that I have collected over the years. So that's what's behind me right there. And we should bring them out sometime. They're kind of fun. Bob Leach. Okay, when do the Michigan biting black flies finally get their fill and go and go away? Sounds like you are trading the uh, Tennessee humidity for the Michigan flies. They're, they're gone pretty much now. They leave really um, towards the middle to end of uh, of July, a little bit in early August, but from September on, they're um, they're not a problem. That's why September October are the best months to go. Yeah, in northern Michigan. The and flies aren't bad. Always though. that every year could be slightly different. Yeah, it could change, you know, but um they're there's they're they're not a problem right now this time of year. So they shouldn't be. Captain's table MDR. Galena territory in Illinois. Have we camped there? I don't know. I don't think so. We've camped where we camp. Oh, we mostly Mostly we just go through Illinois. You know, we've camped uh, near the... Uh, the people in Illinois. We, well, we just uh, drive through your state. Well, we do. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we have... And, and we've also thought of, of, of doing a whole season in things... In doing nothing but like Illinois, Ohio, and Indiana. Uh, we do very little stories on those, and we go through them all all the time. So that would kind of fit onto it. But there's a lot in Ohio that we haven't really done because we're... We just sort of traverse the state both ways, east and west and north and south. And same with uh, uh, Indiana and same with uh, with Illinois. Uh, so we've mostly been over in the western part of Illinois towards the Mississippi and Davenport and the 
what is it, the Quad City area there, but not uh, not not the rest of the state. And you know, I I don't want to be anywhere near um, Chicago at all ever. <laughs> Gigs, can you recommend a nice campground near Torch Lake in Michigan? That's a beautiful lake, one of the our, our favorites. Um, probably. I would, they're a little distant from there, but not bad. Traverse City State Park and Petoskey State Park. I would I would suggest you look at those two. Those are just, you're still a little bit of a drive to Torch Lake. There isn't a uh, state park on Torch Lake, but I would suggest that you go to Traverse City State Park or um, what's the other one I said? Traverse City State Park or Petoskey State Park. And that'll get you there. And maybe something or even up, opened. Or, you know, you could even camp up by um, Indian River. What's the state park there at Indian River? On, uh, I can't remember the name of the lake now. Well, it doesn't have to be a state park. Yeah. It's just campground. Well, I would go to those three in that area. There's a, bit, there's a state park up near Indian River uh, as well, and that's not too far from Torch Lake. So, Dean Schlesenbach. What do you guys use for a TV service? We have a fire stick, but Dean, we just came back from three weeks on the road. Did we turn on the TV once? No. No. We don't watch TV. We don't. I mean, um, what I do is I go outside and watch the sunset and watch the stars come out, listen to the quiet. Pretty boring, huh? For a lot of people. <laughs> We don't watch TV. We don't even have a TV in the bedroom of our fifth wheel. There's one big empty spot on the wall. I don't want one. So we don't watch television. It's too bad they don't ask you about that. You yeah, because I do something to... else to put up on there. Yeah, if you want two TVs, because most of them put it in the bedroom and then the main living area. Of course, it wouldn't probably be but just a few dollars. So we would use the a fire stick and we would stream um stream you know netflix or amazon or hulu or something like that but we do not watch television at all which is kind of weird isn't it somebody that does all this video work we don't do it but we don't i don't even we don't and people are always saying oh well, did we, you see so and so these other youtubers and we don't watch them either but we because have a computer we could see yeah, anybody see, we wanted to see there's, there's a couple that we watch we check in occasionally but I mean, we have we don't have enough time to look at our own stuff hardly so so you know it'd be kind of like a busman's holiday if we were watching tv we we just we don't we don't watch tv i can't stand the commercials uh, yeah but you Unless know it's you not so bad with, out, with streaming stuff yeah. no that's better but, but I start jack part jack partain what are the best months to go to glacier september september october september early snow. october you may get you may get snow it In snows september. every every day every month of the year up at logan pass and glacier but we've gone for many years, we would go in late May, early June. And the problem was, is that uh, going to the Sun Road at Glacier was still snowed in. Mm -hmm. And usually that's not open until July. It was even later, I think, this year, a couple of weeks into July. But the best month, uh, September, I would say, at Glacier. It's just a fabulous month there. And, and early, maybe a week or two into October. Although it'll get cool. It'll get very cool. Glacier's awesome. Susan Corner truck. Love your work. Thank you for that. Wish you would uh, come to Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Pennsylvania. What a beautiful okay. state. Okay, Susan, we'll give you an assignment. We we need a place to camp in how many weeks? One week? Three weeks from tonight on a Sunday night. We're not but we can't get there until we have to leave Hershey about 6 p.m. And we need to get someplace to camp before dark. So where would you have a stay? Uh, we're going to camp our first night in our new motorhome uh, on the road between Pennsylvania and uh, and Michigan. So Hershey and Michigan. Uh, so we were planning on just driving as hard Drive as we can, hit the turnpike, get, get the Ohio turnpike because they have you know RV spots you can you can camp there. And this is the hard part that we would really like to stay and camp for a week or two, but we won't have Bo, and yeah, we, won't we have will Bo. be leaving Bo for eight days. And I know. Yeah, he'll probably be a real pain. So it, it's it's probably not going to work out, but um, we do love Pennsylvania. It's a great state. Beautiful state. We've had a lot of fun in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's probably not going to work. We'll probably have to sleep on the turnpike going home. Linda Barcum. All right. You need uh, to go to all the Abraham Lincoln memorials and museums near Springfield in Illinois. I do. 
And you do too, because you're with you me. You were born on Abraham because Lincoln's birthday. I share a birthday with you Abraham and, Lincoln. You and Abe Lincoln, like yeah. that. Same birthday. Uh, thanks, Linda. Susan. I'm from Michigan. And the two places that I stay for my uh, halfway point are the Cooser and Bald Eagle. What are they? I have no idea. Halfway stay point to point. where uh, or what? What's Cooser? I don't know. Uh, okay. Mm. Oh, that's where you stay there. Okay. I'm okay. Uh, okay. I, we all are, right. We are we are tired. Okay. I'm fine. Don't make us work, folks, because <laughs> our brains are just not working tonight. <laughs> I'm just keep. Yeah. Uh, and traffic was so heavy today. Today it was really coming heavy. home from the western side of the state. Yeah, it, it was, was bumper to bumper. Yeah. Uh, all and right. It, I, I think we're going to kind of wrap it up. It looks like our questions have kind of ended and. Uh, we want to thank everybody for who might have watched us tonight over on LinkedIn. I think we did, I think we simulcast also on Twitter tonight. Uh, so no, ask us anything next week, next Sunday night, because we will be, um, you know, it's Labor Day weekend and lots of people have stuff. And every now and then we need to take a break. And uh, we're going to do that next week because I know many of you will be, uh, you know, someplace enjoying Labor Day weekend. So we're going to take next week off. We'll be back two weeks from tonight and we will be somewhere in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. probably uh, near Hershey. And we will be announcing a new, another giveaway. Uh, and then uh, we'll kind of give you a preview of what we're going to be doing at the Hershey show. We're at the Hershey show really the entire week. We look forward to meeting you. We've been putting in our newsletter when we're going to do meet and greets and we'll remind everybody again, but um, we have several meet and greets scheduled during the week and we look forward to meeting a lot of you out there. And um, we, we Hershey's always like a it's it's where you see all the brand new 2023 RVs and in one place with lots of other people and everybody's happy and we can't wait. And the weather's usually quite good there. So so thank you guys for watching. Please uh, check the um, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, you can do so. Just go to RVLifestyle.com. There'll be plenty of, of, of links there where you can sign up for the newsletter. We've got a great podcast coming up this week. We're going to talk on Wednesday about this horrible disease that is claiming the lives of dogs all across the country. You may have heard about it as just being in Michigan. It's not. It's happening in many different parts of the country. It's incredibly contagious. We'll talk about that uh, with some rather startling advice from uh, uh, ground zero of this, uh, this this canine parvo epidemic that's going around. That'll be in the podcast on Wednesday. So listen for that. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we are going to um, finish up the newsletter after this. And I think we're going to go to bed early tonight. And, and I'm going to continue to do laundry. Oh, yeah. That's the downside of all this <laughs> yeah. traveling, isn't it? Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, we thank you guys so much for watching. Bye-bye. Happy trails.